Welcome to Sunlight. My name is Jason. I'm one of the pastors here. I want to just encourage you to download the Sunlight app. Stick around to the end of the service so you can learn a little bit more how to do that. But for now, let's worship together. Welcome to Sunlight Community Church. I'm so glad that you've joined us today for worship. Our purpose as a church is to know Jesus, to make Jesus known, and to help people live a Jesus life. And so because we're aspiring to those things, we're glad that you're joining our, your heart to our purpose. Today, as we gather for worship, I want our call to worship to come from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. This is a verse that I've learned so long ago, and it's just a verse that I think is so helpful. It says this, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it, and they are safe. Today, we wanna to encourage you to run to Jesus, to find your righteousness and strength in Him. So let's turn our hearts to worship today as we sing praises to Him. Slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my In 2021, I've been saying this again and again and again, that I think it's almost in every person's heart, Christian or not Christian. We're all just saying, wow, as we look out at our nation, it's politics, our culture, when we're looking out in our communities, at schools, it's churches, even our own families, even ourselves, we're saying this, wow, something's got to change. And I've just been encouraging people that Instead of seeking change out there, we first seek change in here. That we ask that Jesus would be at work and that there'd be a revival that gets started and it starts here. But our whole purpose is that there'd be a revival that breaks out from us individually and, and starts to break out into our culture, into our land. And for that reason, because we're praying that things will change, in light of the inauguration this week, I think it's good that we take a moment to pray for our country, pray for its leaders, and ask that God would be at work, bringing about the change that's truly needed. So I invite you to join me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we wanna thank you that we can always turn to you. That in fact, you are a hope. 
you are our strength. You are the one who's at work in this world bringing about your kingdom, revealing your glory, bringing about the changes that we need. We'd like to ask and pray, Lord, that you would be at work in our nation now. As our country has celebrated the inauguration of a new president, we know that you command us to pray for our leaders. And so we lift our president before you, our vice president. We lift senators and congressmen. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for all who, who serve men and women who are serving in every area of our government, our schools, our communities. We pray for church leaders. We pray for teachers. We pray for pastors. Lord, we're asking that you would be at work in individual hearts changing this land, each and every person in it, for your purposes. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, cause you're a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning every heart. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, I worship I worship you, cause you're a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, sing it out, oh, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are, and that is who you are. don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working 
You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Oh, even when I don't see it, you're working. See it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you working. Even when I don't feel it, you working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, oh, Waymaker. Miracle worker, promise giver, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise giver, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, and that is who you are. As a pastor, I've just become absolutely convinced of one thing, which is that when we look at all the change that's needed in our society, in our government, in our culture, uh, in our communities, in our schools, in our churches, in our families, uh, I'm convinced of this, that the change we need is spiritual revival. Uh, it just, it, it's not gonna work for us, you know, if you're building a house and trying to fix up a house to be changing things aesthetic, when the foundation is crumbled out from underneath the house. You've got to build a strong foundation first, and then all the other changes to the house can come after that. And listen, it's a spiritual foundation, a spiritual revival that we need, which is why this year, in 2021, uh, we're gonna just be spending our effort at getting back to the fundamentals, getting back to the foundation, which is Jesus. And so this whole year, we're gonna be talking about who Jesus is and why he came and the profundity of who he is, the glory of Christ. As we get into it today, I wanna to remind you of this verse we started with, Proverbs 18.10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. And I'm just encouraging you again, to run to safety in Jesus. If you wanna find strength, if you wanna find wholeness, if you wanna find wellness, the place to go is Jesus. And we're gonna be seeing this as we turn to this account in Matthew chapter four. We'll be talking about the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. And we're gonna see that if you're struggling, if you're feeling tempted and tried and tested, that it's not gonna do any good to try to be strong yourself or fortify yourself, you've got to run to the strong tower, the name of the Lord, to Jesus Christ. That's where you find safety. At any rate, I invite you to join me. We're gonna be reading together Matthew chapter four, verses one through 11, uh, the temptation story. 
Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you're the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it's also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you'll bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. Here, I want to explain that this passage tells us to run to Jesus when we're feeling tempted, when we feel weak, when we feel beleaguered, when we feel frustrated, when, when we're miserable or worn down. What we need to do is we need to run to Jesus. Now, I want to show you how this passage works. The first thing we need to do is we need to take a deep dive into the beginning of Matthew's gospel again and locate how this passage works. We talked about this last time when we discussed the baptism of Jesus, that there is a parallel running from the story of Jesus to the story of the Old Testament. We noticed in chapter one that there's a man named Joseph. His father is Jacob. We see that in the genealogy. And um, the key thing we know about Joseph is he's a dreamer. And his dreams actually lead the family of God down to Egypt. Well, that stands in parallel with the story in the Old Testament, beginning in the book of Genesis uh, chapter 37, where there's this man named Joseph, whose father is Jacob, and he has these dreams that lead him down to safety in Egypt, along with the family of God. We saw that there's a wicked king on the throne in chapter 2 of uh, the book of Matthew. His name is Herod, and um, he's so concerned about uh, rivals that he has all the babies exterminated Uh, in order to try to stamp out his rivals, which is so reminiscent of the Old Testament story of Pharaoh, who eventually became so concerned with power that he was killing off all God's children in the Nile River. We saw that Joseph eventually uh, led the first family out of Egypt. And, um, you know, this is so reminiscent of the story of Exodus when they came out of Egypt back into the promised land. And then when we got to chapter 3, We saw that just the same way God's people in the Old Testament passed through the waters as they left Egypt, Jesus passes through the waters of the Jordan River. Uh, Finally, in chapter 4, we get to the temptation story of Jesus in the wilderness. And again, that's so reminiscent of the, the story of God's people who wandered in the wilderness for 40 years as they're tempted and tested. Jesus now was in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights being tempted and tested. And then finally, uh, you know, God's people are brought into the promised land where they can be a light for the nations. And Jesus moves to Capernaum where a light shines in the darkness. There is this parallel way in which the story of Jesus is following the story of God's people in the Old Testament. It's here in chapter 4 that we can really dig in and see what Matthew is getting at. You'll notice in each of the temptations, when Jesus responds to the temptation, he actually quotes scripture. He says, for it is written, for it is written, for it is written. Uh, when the devil tempts him about turning stones into bread, he, he, he says, man doesn't live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's a quote from Deuteronomy chapter 8. Uh, when the devil tempts him at a point of strength and says, throw yourself off the temple, uh, Jesus responds, he says, it's also written, do not put the Lord your God to a test, which is a quote from Deuteronomy 6. When uh, the devil tempts him and says, here, bow your knee and worship me, uh, Jesus says, no, worship the Lord your God and serve him only, which is also a quote from Deuteronomy chapter 6. And now listen, uh, the three scripture passages that Jesus quotes They're all taken from the book of Deuteronomy. What is the book of Deuteronomy? Well, 
the book of Deuteronomy is a sermon that Moses gave as God's people were ready to enter into the promised land. He, he looks back on the 40 years of their wandering, on all the temptations they faced, and all the ways they fell, because they fell again and again, constantly rebelling against God, not living his way. And he says, these are the lessons we learned. We learned that we don't live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. We learned that you don't put the Lord your God to the test. We learned that you worship the Lord your God and serve him only. This is what we learned as we fell again and again and again. Here's the point that Matthew's making, that whereas God's people have been falling and failing and faltering when they face temptation, at every point, Jesus faced the exact same kind of temptation. He never failed. He never faltered. He always remained true to what's right. Where we fall, where we face troubles, where we don't live the way we should, Jesus has lived perfectly on our behalf. Here, come with me. Let's take a deep dive and look closely at each one of these temptations to see that the temptations Jesus faced are the same kind of temptations that you and I face all the time, but where we fail, Jesus succeeded. So let's slow down now and take these temptations one at a time. If we carefully look at the first temptation, we'll see that when the tempter comes, when Satan comes, he tempts Jesus at a point of weakness. The Bible says that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. It says in verse 2, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was hungry. This was a point of weakness. He, he hadn't eaten. Uh, his appetites were calling out. And this is what Satan says. He says, if you're the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. He's, he's tempting at a point of weakness. Now, I want you to see something. He's also using the tool of doubt. I feel like at the very end of chapter 3, the baptism story of Jesus, uh, the heavens opened as Jesus was coming out of the waters. The Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove, and then there was the sure voice of God which said, this is my son whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. Um, you got to catch this. This is my son, the sure voice of God. Now listen to what the tempter says. If you're the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. You catch that? If you're the son of God, he is trying to use doubt, which is a classic and ancient tool of the devil. You remember that the sure voice of God told Adam and Eve in the garden that they may not eat from the true fruit of the tree and the knowledge of good and evil. The day they eat of it, they will certainly die. Remember what the devil said? Did God really say you must not eat fruit from the tree of the garden? And uh, did God really say? How often that's the case, that when Satan temp tempts us at a moment of weakness, he tries to introduce doubt. Hey, does God really say these things? Is this really true? Um, that's what's going on. Tell these stones to become bread. And then I want you to notice, now we fall through these kind of temptations all the time. In moments of weakness and doubt, we fall to these temptations. The Israelites did in the Old Testament, but Jesus doesn't fall. He simply responds. He says, it is written, man doesn't live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Listen, we may need food, but there's something more important than food. There's something that we seek first, which is his kingdom and his righteousness. We, we fear the Lord more than we fear our stomachs. Uh, there's something more important, faith, more than our appetites. Jesus, though he's tempted at a point of weakness, uh, where we fall, where we stumble, where we have trouble, he succeeded. He didn't stumble or fall at all. Now let's look at the second temptation. It's true that Satan tempts us at points of weakness. It's also true that he tempts us at points of strength. The second temptation begins this way. It says, the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. And he said, if you're the son of God, notice that tool of doubt again. He said, throw yourself down for it is written. And man, this is interesting. Satan quotes scripture. He says, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so you'll not strike your foot against a stone. 
what's Satan doing? He's saying, oh, so your strength is that you live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's your strength, your faith, living on God's word. Okay, prove it. Step out on it. Take the leap of faith. Uh, it's so interesting. You know, we also are tempted at points of strength. We're tempted to be boastful and proud, to think too much of ourselves, to step out on our own power, to not fall behind and listen to the voice of God. Uh, but where we fall, where we stumble, where we run into trouble, where God's people in the Old Testament stumbled and fell and ran into trouble, Jesus did not. He simply counters with the scripture. He says, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Uh, say Jesus interprets scripture with scripture. And here's the key thing. Instead of being puffed up with pride, I am really good at that, I will do that. There's a humility to him that he's learned to trust God, to, to not put him to the test, to not overstep his bounds. And so he's simply trusting God. God. There's a third temptation. It's one that we face all the time as well. It's a temptation to take a shortcut to convenience rather than following the long road of obedience. It says that devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. And he says, look, I'll give you all of these if you'll just bow down and worship me. I mean, this is a, a fascinating temptation. You say, Jesus, because he's God's son, has already been promised all the kingdoms of the world. You go, for instance, to Psalm 2. Psalm 2 promises that all the nations of the world will belong to the Messiah, to the Christ. The only thing about it, though, is that Jesus knows that the road to inherit all the kingdoms is a road of suffering, pain, rejection, loneliness, and ultimately death on a cross where God would take all the sin of the whole world and place it on the shoulders of Jesus. And he'd have to bear that burden and suffer that cost and, and face the full wrath of God for those things. But right now he could skip all that. No suffering, no long road, no cross, no wrath of God if just in a moment he'll take a shortcut, bow down and bend his knee to worship Satan. How often we have uh, those shortcuts that tempt us. How often we choose the shortcuts of convenience rather than stick to the long road of obedience. But once again, there's a point that Matthew wants us to see clearly where we fail. Where Israel failed in the entire Old Testament, Jesus does not fall. He succeeds. He responds with scripture again. He says, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. In all three of these temptations, these are temptations we face all the time. They're so common to us. Where we fall, here's the key point, Jesus succeeds. So I wanna to try to bring all this together. I think that this passage is telling us something important. It's telling us something important about ourself, and then it's telling us something important about Jesus. What's it telling us about ourself? Well, this passage describes temptations which are common to us. They're the same kind of temptations that God's people faced in the Old Testament. And just like people in the Old Testament, these are temptations we're constantly falling to. Well, what are these temptations like? What, what are they? Well, first of all, all of us are tempted at moments of weakness. You know, if you don't think you have any moments of weakness, just ask people who are close to you how you're falling in areas of weakness. You know, for some of us, it's, it's like anger. You know, at, at the slightest provocation, just boom, we fall right into it. We have a weakness for anger. For some of us, it's, it's our appetites, whether uh, our, our appetite for food or sexuality or clothing or whatever it is, there's a temptation we have. It might be shopping. Uh, whatever it is, you know, at the slightest provocation, it's like we can't help ourselves, we're there. For some of us, it might be a substance. It, it might be an addiction. Um, we're weak and we can't help ourselves. And at the slightest temptation, the slightest provocation, the slightest glance, the slightest look, we, we fall. Uh, we're also tempted at moments of strength. You know, if again, you're unaware of how this happens and how you're falling, 
just ask those who are close to you. Uh, for many of us, uh, we're just so tempted to be so sure of ourselves. We're overconfident, we're boastful. We look down our nose at people. We, we mock other people. We're so certain that we're so good. And listen, our, our culture, it, it takes up mocking, almost like a national sport. Even when you're watching the news, people are mocking each other. And we do the same thing. We think we're so good, they're so bad, we're so smart, they're so dumb. I mean, whether we say it out loud or we just say it in our minds, you know, at the slightest moment when we see someone else doing something wrong or different, we puff ourselves up. It might be greed, it might be pride, it might be boastfulness, but there are ways in which when we're strong at things, Satan uses that and we fall to those temptations. And now, I mean, Temptations that have to do with shortcuts for convenience. How often is it the case that we fall to these temptations? The Bible's saying something about us. Whenever there's an opportunity for us to take a shortcut, to do it the easy way, uh, we're often just going right down that road. And now listen, whether it's weaknesses or strengths or these shortcuts, well, we all know the results. It's misery, it's pain, it's heartache, it's heartbreak. Sometimes we don't even know why we're falling into heartbreak and misery and pain, but if we take just a moment, we'll see we're, we're flawed, we're sinful, we're bent toward falling. And I think this passage is just pointing out all the kind of temptations we face, all the things we fall to, all the misery. What am I trying to say? Well, back to Proverbs 18. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it, and they are safe. I want, you to tell, I want to tell you this, that when faced with temptation, when we say that it's causing misery and pain, our culture has a solution. Here's the solution. You've got to fix yourself. Are you a weak person? Fortify yourself. Get stronger. Are, are, are you boastful and having trouble? Well, it's okay. You, you can fix yourself. You can adjust yourself. Do you sometimes give in to ease and convenience and shortcuts? Well, hang in there. You can change. And our culture is telling us, you, you can change. You can become a better person. Uh, but listen, no matter how hard we try, no matter what manipulation we do to our personality, I think, you know, deep down, we still have our flaws. We still have our foibles and the pain that it's causing, whether it's, it's anger or greed or lust or lying or, or whether it's boastfulness or pride or if it's taking shortcuts and taking the easy way. I mean, it's ruining us. But this Bible also says something about Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. What is this passage saying about Jesus? It's saying that whereas every other person who ever lived falls again and again and again. And all the miseries of this world are, are caused by all that falling, all that sin, all that falling short. There is one person who stands out as a hero, who though he faced exactly the same temptations as we did, Although he was given every opportunity, whether through weakness or through strength or through opportunities for convenience and shortcuts, he never fell even one time. And what is the Bible saying? That if you want to overcome this misery, if you want to overcome this pain, if you want to overcome our human nature, if you want to find righteousness, the righteous run to the strong name of the Lord. What we cannot do which is make ourselves right, bend ourselves back straight. What we cannot do, God has done in sending Jesus Christ into this world. He came to be a savior, to save us, to rescue us. We can't rescue ourselves. We can't save ourselves. We can't bend ourselves back into shape. Jesus is the answer. This passage is telling us about Jesus, that he is uniquely qualified to be our savior. Why? because he never sinned, even one time. God never had any problem with him. He lived a completely righteous life. What does that mean? It means that he's qualified to pay the price for us, that he could be our substitute and take our place. God never had a problem with him. He has a problem with us because he never had a problem with him. Jesus can say, I'll pay the price, which is what happened in his life, in his death, in his resurrection. Jesus was standing in our place. 
He was living the life we should have lived so that he could die the death we should have died and take our place. And listen, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. Here's what this passage is urging us to do. Instead of looking to ourselves to fix ourselves, to bend ourselves into shape, to, to try to strengthen and fortify ourselves, don't worry about that. There is a strong tower, a hero, a savior. His name is Jesus. If you run to him, that's where you'll find safety. That's where change can happen. And now let me just press down because I think there's two things that I want you to notice. How to run to Jesus. It's striking that each time as Jesus responds to temptation, that there's something that happens. He quotes scripture. And I've taken note of this, that every time Jesus quotes scripture, he, he quotes a scripture where, where God is put first and God is at the center. Man doesn't live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. I'm just struck. I'm struck by how Jesus put God first. I think that's a hint to us. We've been saying, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. The name of the Lord's a strong tower. The righteous run to it, and they are safe. Here's what we do. We make Christ our first priority. That's where I believe the true change happens. That's where the revival begins, when we, when we run to Jesus. One more thing, we've got to know Jesus. How do we know him? Listen, it's so striking to me. Each time Jesus responded, he was pointing us the way to scripture. He says, it is written, it is written, it is written. As Jesus was overcoming these temptations, he was pointing us to the way in which we, we put God first and we get to know Jesus. We run to him as we find him here. In the Bible, this is where we get to know Jesus. This is how we hear his voice. This is how we navigate the waters of our life. And if you get connected to Jesus in faith, if you turn away from doing it by your own effort, if you run to Jesus, if you get to know him, you'll find that not only, not only does he provide salvation, but he begins to change you from the inside out. The more you get to know him, the more you're made like him, the more... His righteousness starts to fill you, not only in a legal sense that we're made right with God, but in a qualitative sense that our daily life begins to change. If you're a person who has a weakness, it might be an addiction, it might be a provocation that leads to a problem, Jesus can save you from that. If you're a person who looks down your nose at people, if you're boastful, when you see who he is and his humility, he can save you from that. If you're a person who has short-term thinking, who always moves to convenience because he gives you eternal life, Jesus can save you from that. And so uh, we run to Jesus. He's our strong tower in him. We find strength and safety. And we get to know him by putting him first and reading his word and letting him change us from the inside out. That is the change we need. That's the revival that we must seek. And I just urge you today to turn to Jesus, to seek him first, to run to him as a place of safety and a strong tower. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. We're so glad that you joined your heart with ours to worship Jesus. He is the strong tower that we run to him. In him, we're safe. And uh, if you've discovered that today, if you've seen that Jesus is the answer to all our foibles and troubles, then I just urge you to dedicate your life to him. As we conclude this service, it's important once again to commit ourselves to him. If uh, you leave an offering today, and you could do so by going online, uh, by giving of yourself, I want you to give that as a token. As you give that offering, say, all that I am, all that I have, all my relationships, all my time, all my effort, all of everything about me, it's yours, Lord. Commit yourself to him, run to him, find your safety in him, put him first, give your whole self to him. And then, as you strike out in this week, every opportunity he gives you, it's for him. Every relationship he puts in front of you, it's for him. All of 
who we are, all of what we have, it's for him. And as you go to do God's work in the world, I want you to go with this blessing. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus, may the love of God, and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve him. What a powerful message. As I said earlier, remember to download the Sunlight app. It's easy to do. All you need to do is go to Google Play or the App Store if it's an iOS, and all you have to do is type in Sunlight Church and click download. It's that easy to stay connected with our news, find sermons, you can even give right there in the app. As Christians, we're asked to respond to a giving God by giving of ourselves, which like I said, you can do right through the app. Also, you can stay connected to us by texting 772-277-7072. Let us know of any concerns or anything we can be praying for you about. Also, make us aware if you gave your life to Christ. We want to know about it and celebrate with you. And finally, I challenge you to subscribe and to share this video with one person this week as a digital missionary.